Greetings, greetings, my fellow descendants. It's your boy, right? Check April, and I'm back with yet another interesting tutorial this time. It's actually a debt that I'm repaying back. You know, I'm very, very sorry to uh, the 2022 uh, matriculants because I never dropped this tutorial during their November examinations. But now you are the lucky group in 2023 because now K Pro is about to drop a bomb on you guys. So before I continue, guys, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh do tell your friends uh, your family your teachers to do subscribe to the youtube channel you know follow us drop relevant comments about what we are talking about ask questions you know communicate with us you know uh, 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 give us hints you know i really enjoy it when you guys uh, uh compliment on the comment section it gives me that thing uh that, that 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 motivation that sense of motivation to continue doing what i'm doing guys right so thank you very much for the subscribers the views and everything you know if you have a friend or a sister a little sister a bigger sister who's struggling in this topic uh you do just recommend them to to this channel and give them the uh the, the video links guys okay yes guys so uh do subscribe follow us on tiktok siamaster z822 i think uh follow us on instagram siamaster z as well and yeah, on YouTube as well and on Facebook as well. Okay, guys. So today, guess what? I'm going to be talking about now uh, poetry. Yeah, I know the class of 2022 is going to be very, very jealous for you guys. But you are lucky if you're upgrading because now you get to get your second chance. And k is going to be teaching this one. Right. So poetry, guys, right? It's on your paper too your english final paper now what happens is that now what happens is that it's there in it's it's, it's 30 marks right because they want to give you three types of poetry now the mistake that you guys do is that way now you you are given poems in class and now with all these poems press it's like the other one it's um i don't know the hard frost or something like that um the other one uh it's the african elegy there's a lots and lots of them and you guys expect a person to go through each one of them guys you'll never learn anything if you want someone to actually do the question with you no what you must learn what i taught myself is that i must learn how to approach any type of a poem so what i did is that i don't read the african elegy and practice it before i write the paper what i do is that i have to understand how do you answer poetry how do you analyze a poem then from there i can answer any type of a poem because you're going to get an unseen poem when you are cramming those other three poems and then even if you can cram all of them and then they all don't come out the way you wanted them to come out and then you get it wrong because you crammed but imagine if you knew something you know cramming and knowing something is two different things guys that's what i'm talking about today so i'm not going to teach you all these poems that they give you because they might change them what are you going to do i am going to teach you guys how to analyze the poem and things to look out for and how to answer the questions okay first of all first things first guys let's talk let's tell the truth a poem yeah? a poem is a comprehension why a poem is a comprehension i know my c looks ugly but i'm doing it on purpose a poem is a comprehension i'm gonna say ch yeah? a poem is a comprehension what is a comprehension uh it's understanding you know it's comprehending when you comprehend we are trying to understand something so we are trying to understand the poem poetry questions are comprehension questions but what's the difference between a comprehension in paper one and the poem uh, and maybe uh, uh the contextual questions it's the level of asking everything has its own identity it's like having a car you have code 10 license we have code 14 right we have code 8 right what's the difference is the identity you yeah, understand what I'm saying? The identity. We can have the same machine but different identities. It's still the same thing. It's the same as doing a grade 12 and doing an NCV at college. It's the same thing but the identity is not the same. Do you understand? Okay, so now the poem, it is not a higher level of comprehension. The higher level of a comprehension, I've always said it, is the contextual questions, right? That's a higher level of a comprehension. But now when you're talking about poems, guys, poems are very, very easy because they have an identity right the only thing that is difficult is that there is too much humor and there is too much figurative language unlike comprehension in paper one which has literal language so here there's a lot of figurative language so you have to be very very good at understanding figurative language so what i'm going to do to you guys right now i'm just going to teach you poetry simple things that you have to know there's a lot that you have to know about poetry that's why i'm going to attach a document for you guys because i love you guys right Oh, before I continue, I'm going to create a membership um, a membership thing so you guys can join the membership and pay a monthly subscription fee to me and you get exclusive videos. How about that? Because I love you all guys, right? So anyways, guys, 
I am going to teach you about poetry and I'm going to attach a document where you can read everything that I've taught so far on poetry. Now listen to me. In exchange for what? For nothing. Because I love you guys and knowledge is there uh, for you guys. I'm here to share the knowledge. I'm here to change your lives. I'm here to inspire you guys. I'm here to motivate you guys so that you can become better citizens in the societies for you guys to pass on the knowledge if you can. Right? So now listen to me very, very carefully. Right? Um... The thing about now poetry is that there's a lot of figurative language, but I'm only going to focus on the things that I've seen in the poem, things that I know that they are always there, right? The rest, you'll read for yourself because there's like, what, alliteration, assonance, I'm not going to touch on those things. You know them from grade 10, right? So I'm going to say now, uh, you know, I use uh, capital letters. I never write in full words because of my writing device, right? So we have diction. Diction, you know it from paper one. Eh? Diction is basically your vocabulary or your choice of words, right? Have a pen and paper. Please do, do, do your writing. Diction, it's your vocabulary, or we can call it choice of words. Vocabulary and choice of words is the same thing, and that's diction. Right? All right. Now, we have diction. Do you understand what, it's, what is diction? Right. Then we have what we call tone, right, guys? Tone and mood. I'm going to say tone and mood, right? Why do I mix them together? I want to show you that this is a very dumb thing, right? So I'm going to say tone or mood, right? So, guys, tone, T, it's the poet's attitude towards the poem so as i'm writing a poem there is this attitude that i'm giving off if i'm talking about a certain political party and i'm saying it hasn't done anything for us in the past seven years and stuff and i'm ridiculing this party it means that i'm having maybe a, a, a you know a, maybe a, let me say a somber attitude towards it i don't know there's a lot of uh, attitudes that you can say but you never say a sad attitude or a sad tone never that's very 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 basic there is words that you apply for that right so, if I'm writing about a political party and I'm saying good things, you can say I'm having an optimistic attitude, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a hopeful attitude and all those kind of things, right? So, you are now looking at me as what? As the poet and saying, okay, this is, that's what the tone is about. You're looking at the poet's mood when they were writing the tone. Now, the mood is the reader's attitude towards. You understand what I'm saying? As much as I could be writing all this thing and my mood is... Uh, somber but when you receive it you won't receive it the same way i was writing it so how do you feel when you're you're reading uh, something that i wrote about 1976 killings uh in Shavville massacre and hector peterson's story you feel sad and you say it's giving me that somber feeling and stuff you understand what i'm saying so it's all about the mood is the reader's attitude the tone is the writer the poet is attitude. So you have to know that every time they ask you about that, right? So because they like to treat you, they give you a three-mark question, they say, give us the tone of this thing or explain further about the tone of this thing and then you get confused. You don't know what to talk about. Tone. We're not talking about textures, guys. This is not creative arts. This is not creative arts where you guys are going to be talking about the surface is rough or the surface is soft or it's, it's smooth. No. Tone, we're not talking about textures. We're not talking about the colors. Eh, eh, no. We are talking about now uh, uh, the attitude thank you very much now let's move on i'm not making jokes here i'm very very serious guys we have what we call euphemism euphemism it's a great way of saying something you know um she's unattractive um she's dull that's a great way of saying somebody is ugly never mind sorry for saying that uh ne, ne, let me let me move on uh hyperbole right hyperbole uh, um hyperbole guys uh this is what I, these are the things that i want you to know because i believe you're gonna pass a uh, hyperbole i'm um, sorry about that but you can see this is an age guys but i'll write it here because uh, there's some of you guys uh, who can't see but you guys it carries so it's fine though um let's move on from that uh hyperbole is an exaggerated statement right it's simple exaggeration you know, uh, I was here a million years ago. It will take you a million years to finish that homework. It will take you a million years to finish my work. Maybe your teacher would be saying that. Yes. Why? They are exaggerating. So they are doing what we call a hyper. Oh, you know, I tried doing that a million times. Okay, let's stop right there. Very, very easy. You know what is a hyper bully? Did it in grade eight. Right. Now, a satire. This is what is new and this is what is killing you. But you did it in, you did it in grade 11. But you're acting as if you don't know. And now you're acting as if you don't know poems because you are lazy to think. Right. Now, a satire is ridiculous. Right. First thing, satire is... Now, I want you to write this down seriously now. Because this is very important. It's always the even paper one it's today. I never taught it on the comprehension thing. But I'm going to teach it now. A satire. 
a satire a satire is one what does it, what is a satire it's ridiculing ne? it's ridiculing it's making fun of something in a in a certain way right it's ridiculing i'm not gonna write the word ridiculing fully you have to write it down it's your job to write down i'm teaching and i'm talking right i'm the professor right it's ridiculing so the, what is the purpose of a satire guys it's very important that you should know this because satires once they ask you about a satire it's a poetic technical question so what is, what, once it's a poetic technical question it means that now you must know what does a satire do a satire always causes fun yeah? when you see satire just know that you are having fun or we are having an amusement yeah? we are having fun with a certain amusement that we are having right that's a satire very very important that you must know that it's ridiculing Right? And what does it do? It makes it to have fun. Yeah. Almost like sarcasm, right? Sharp. But I won't tell you what sarcasm is because you use it each and every day. Right. And then we have a rhetorical question. Now, this rhetorical question, guys, um, you must know what a rhetorical question does. You know this from your paper one, you know, that uh, uh you know it keeps uh, the, the reader engaged, that you know it does that, in it, it emphasizes the facts. You know, it makes the reader uh, uh, curious and stuff, inquisitive and all those kind of things. So I won't dwell on that. And then we can go to a pun. This is very important now. Pun. Now this one, I hey, you must write down this, this one. You must write it down by fire, by force. Pun. Right. Because it's there. It's always there. A pun, guys. Ne? It's very easy. You just have to understand that it's the use of a double meaning of a word for humor. Right. Can't make an example. But it's a use of a double word for humor. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a use of a double word for humor. Do you understand what I'm saying? So uh, I used to tell my teacher when she asked me, she would, she, she would say to me, uh, her name is Miss Cosa at Forest High School. Shout out to her. She would say to me, um, Pekana, please give me a, a pun that you know. And I would quote lyrics from a popular South African artist called Saudi. And I would say, um, uh, my swag... Oh no! What what would I say? Um, something about Jewish and stuff. Oh, I murdered I murdered the Jewish like Nazi. I murdered the Jewish like Nazi. Now that's a pun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because now it's a double. This thing has a double meaning. Do you understand? It has a double meaning. I murder. History learners understand this one better. I murder the Jewish like Nazi. This can mean one. One thing it could mean that Jewish. We know it in in slang. It means that I'm 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 I'm. I'm dressed nice. I have golds, you know. I have bracelets and all those kind of thing, stuff, you know. Uh, but then, in other words, in history forms, you can say that, you know, uh, the Jewish was murdered by the Nazi people, which is Adolf Hitler and stuff. So it has two meanings. So it has double meanings. That's a pun. I'm not gonna continue. You know these things. You are a learner after all. Now let's come to these things. Very very important things. I even teach this one in paper one that what I'm about to teach right now. Uh, you guys are very very lazy, and I'm very disappointed in you guys. You guys are very very lazy. I'm angry, actually, as I'm doing this tutorial. Right. Uh, I'm going to write three letters. P. Make sure that you have a pen and paper, guys. Ne? I love you all so much, guys. Ne? I love you all so much. I want you guys to achieve a lot. I love you all so much. Uh, irony. Uh, but in the end, C. I have one of these things. Ne? These are twins. But they come in different forms. Then I'm going to go down and say oxymoron. Please write for me oxymoron as well. Oxymoron. Uh, you can write for me oxymoron. I can't write it. You know my thingy. Oxymoron. Oxymoron. And this is going to be my last part. What is that? What does the P represent, guys? P represents paradox. Yeah. Paradox. I represents irony. C represents contrast. I've said this before, probably. Or I, I was saying it in my Zoom classes, probably. Those who are attending my Zoom classes know this thing. So, okay, guys. Now, listen to me very, very carefully. Um, irony. Paradox. Contrast. Is the same thing. If you want to argue with me, I'm a debate champion. Bring it on in the comment section. Right? Paradox, irony, contrast is the same thing. So what I usually do to my learners, I explain irony and then I tell them, once you see contrast, once you see uh, paradox, it means the same thing. Don't even think twice. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So what is contrast, guys? It's contrasting ideas. It's opposite ideas. Irony, opposite ideas. Paradox, 
opposite ideas. Thank you very much. I'm um, moving on from that. Right. And then we have what we call an oxymoron. So an oxymoron is basically these three things. Yeah, it's it's a paradox that contain that is containing two words. Do you understand what I'm saying? In two words. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because here, yeah, contrast or irony or paradox itself can be contained in a sentence, in a paragraph. A whole paragraph can be paradox, or could be ironical, right? Or can have a contradiction, right? But when you're talking about an oxymoron, you're talking about Two words that consist of a contrast, irony, or paradox. Right, guys? Thank you very much. Now, I'm done. All right. Now, let's see. How? The question is now, okay, pro. How do we answer poetry now with all this nonsense that you're teaching us? It's not nonsense, guys. Ne? Now, when we're going to answer poetry questions, you have to keep in mind, a poem is a comprehension. Right? So, there's a worksheet that I used to share with my learners last year. Probably still there, but I'm also going to attach it. Because I love your guys, right? So all you have to know right now, since I taught you the poetic devices, all you have to know, you must know what does critical discuss stand for, uh, evaluate stand for, you must know what uh, explain stands for, you must know uh, what discuss stands for, you must know uh, um, uh, what 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 these comprehension are uh, key words that they usually use or. Uh, the effectiveness questions you must know what that stands for all those kind of things ne? so usually if if i don't get to upload the worksheet on the description link on the description of the video you guys can go find these uh on uh, the first youtube video that i made for comprehension right where i tell you what critically discuss means where i tell you critically explain means uh critically comment you know you must know what that's cc mean which is critically comment right but i have a worksheet for that so i'm gonna uh, attach links two links one for poetry one for these things so that you guys can understand them right so i won't bother explaining myself so once you understand this thing they'll say to you discuss the effectiveness of a satire listen to this this stupid question discuss the effectiveness of the satire in stanza two now look someone is going to be stressed who was cramming the elegy yesterday or was cramming the sonnet or whatever yesterday? Ne? But me, because I know poetry. Why is they say discuss? I say, okay, I, I studied discuss. Discuss means uh, give uh, both the bad and the good. Okay, discuss. Uh, the satire, what is a satire? Then you go and say, oh, yesterday in my notes, they said it's ridiculing and it causes uh, amusement. And then they say I must discuss it. In 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 in, 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 in stanza two. So what what is happening there now? You say okay, uh, the satire in stanza two was used to cause amusement because we can, we quote something. You quote something. You say yes because now we can see in this and this and this and this and this it creates humor or it creates fun in this and this and this and this. Three marks for free. For free, for free. Comment on the tone. Of the poem, they will never say the tone of the poet because they're gonna give you the answer. So they just gonna say comment on the tone of the poet. Commenting means you can every question that has comment, you cannot get it wrong, guys. Why? Because comment is like commenting on Facebook. No comment is ever wrong as long as you can support it. So if you're getting a comment question wrong, there's something wrong with you seriously now. I'm very, very angry, guys. You cannot get comment wrong. Comment means give us your point of view, but just support it. Give facts on it. It's simple. So when you say comment on the tone, you say the reader has a somber, uh, somber tone. This poetry has a somber tone. How do you prove that the, 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 the tone of the reader, uh, of the writer, or of the poet is sad? You just go and quote something that is sad like and use that to support your answer. Then you get three marks for free. Three marks in poetry. You can get 30 out of 30. Even in the unseen poem, you can get 30 out of 30. Tell me that a poem is, di uh, is difficult. Let's talk on the comment sections, guys. Let's talk on the comment sections. Uh, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. So, guys, um, that's it for today. That's it for today. I didn't touch on the sonnets, the allegories, um, uh, the, the metonymies. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about those. I really never care about those. The rhyming schemes and stuff, I really don't care about those because they are hardly asked. And I said they never question those. So, I don't care about those. But... The document that I have has all those things, so it's up to you to read further. Me, I was teaching you how to approach this thing. Right? I was teaching you guys how to 
approach this thing okay guys so guys uh i think um i'm gonna start um having uh tiktok sessions with you guys so i'm gonna be live on tiktok and then you guys can throw questions ask everything i'm also gonna be live on youtube as usual so you guys can ask questions you know i'm gonna wait for all of you guys to be back from school and then we go live on youtube we set a date sometimes we go live on tiktok we talk you know we just conversate talk make plans see what we can do to empower each other give you uh, guys i want to visit your schools i want to visit your schools give me the number of your english teacher or the number of your school and then i'm there right so thank you very much for the continuous support guys uh, i see that we are about to reach 100,000 overall views which is a great achievement for us you know especially when i started this it was just 20 views you know it it it, 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 it really makes me happy to see the progress that we've made so guys continue sharing com continue commenting continue liking continue recommending us uh if you want tutoring private tutoring guys it's 300 rands per month for english that right? we use zoom or we use whatsapp lessons don't ask me anymore what do we use we don't do physical classes right unless if you live around our area or unless if we are hosting a cross night right so it's zoom classes or whatsapp video call classes they started 300 rands per month per month for each and every subject but i deal exclusively with english maths and physics from there we take it from there for the whole year especially those that are grading it's your chance right now because you are running out of time so it's up to you what you want to do guys thank you thank you very much guys um god bless you guys thank you very much don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share tell your mother Tell your father, tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your principal that K-Pro is the best tutor South Africa has ever seen and he's still going to go far. He is the best of the best. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.